Today we're talking about support items. With the upcoming patch, two support items will see changes, more specifically nerfs, Gauntlet of Thieves and Sovereignty. What are those nerfs? In case of Gauntlet of Thieves, the base health is decreased from 350 to 300 and the magical and physical protection aura is decreased from 20 to 15. A hit in both regards, both the protections being hit as well as the health being hit, so probably quite impactful. When it comes to Sovereignty, the nerf is not as impactful for the support himself, but rather for his team because it mostly affects the aura. The physical protection on the item is increased from 30 to 40, but the aura loses 15 physical protection, so it goes from 30 to 15. If you count the math here, it's still a 5 protection minus for the support as well, so 5 physical protection less. Overall a little less impactful and brings us into an interesting situation where we have Gauntlet of Thieves with a 15-15 aura, Sovereignty with an aura that only gives 15 physical protection, whereas Hardwood Amulet stays on the 20 magic protection aura. For Hardwood nothing really changes. As the stats are the same and the item is magical protection, you usually don't really want to get it too early. It doesn't have the HP 5 that warrants it, it doesn't have the physical protection that you need early on against minions as well as players, which usually are more off, they're usually more physical damage dealers than magical damage dealers. So the outlier case where you actually get hardwood first is relatively rare and will not be considered in this video. We are looking at the option that you will look for in most games where you need physical protection early on in the game or at least something alike, something that gives you effective health against physical damage dealers. For that we jump into the numbers. Before we get started, a quick explanation how the numbers are made, what we're trying to figure out here. We're gonna have a level 10 gap, so roughly around the time where you finish those items, usually those first items after your boots. It's a bit of an estimation, but you know, you get the idea. It depends on the situation and what you build beforehand, but in the end, one or two levels won't matter too much regarding the base stats. We just need to have a uh, aligned level for every single item in regards to how it will perform compared to others, and level 10 seemed fine here. The items of this level 10 gap will have by default are Watcher's Gift and Reinforced Greaves. Now there are many options of how you could build a support early on in the game. You could for example go for Traveler's Shoes instead of the Reinforced Greaves. You could go for Lono's Mask and you would have more health over the progress of the game. You could go for Mark of the Vanguard for some early physical protection that way and some damage reduction. So that's quite flexible. In the end, all these changes would not do all too much in regards to the effective health values at the end. They would be higher for every single item if, for example, a Mark of the Vanguard was included, but the difference between them would not have a massive disparity. For example, physical defense items that don't have health would benefit from a little more health in the build. At the same time, an item like Stone of Gaia would benefit from more health as you would have more percentage HP for the passive to work from, or there would be items with a lot of health that would benefit a little more from the protections from Mark of Vanguard and damage reduction, but all of this is kind of around the same level. This is not the crucial deciding point between these items for the most part. So I went with Watchers and Reinforced here, one of the many options that you could go for. And then I looked at numbers, lots of numbers. We looked at the base stats of Gap without any items, the base stats including Watcher's Gift and Reinforced Greaves, and then in this order, Sovereignty, Midgardian Mail, Emperor's Armor, Gauntlet of Thieves, Breastplate of Valor, Height of the Nemean Lion, Son of Gaia, Son of Binding, Height of the Urchin, and Height of the Urchin with 5 stacks. Don't be worried about what you're seeing on your screen right now, this is just a quick overview of all the stats that I did, all the comparisons, this is gonna shrink down in just a second, but if you wanna look into those numbers deeper, you can pause the video here and look into it in detail. What I compared here was the health values, the physical protection, magical protection, HP 5, including some special things like Stone of Gaia's passive, based on the health that the character currently has, and then the physical effective health, the physical effective health after 5 seconds, 10 seconds, and 15 seconds, including HP 5, and the magical effective health, only including the first level basically after 0 seconds. Effective health is the damage you can take from a specific source translated from your own health. So if you have a lot of health and a lot of physical protection, your effective health will be much much higher, whereas if you have a lot of health and a little physical protection, your physical effective health will be relatively lower, while your magical effective health will be higher because you already have a lot of health. A very basic concept, the more health, the more protections, and that factored together, the better the effective health in the end. When two characters have the same amount of health, but one has high physical protection, the other one has low, obviously the character with high physical protections will be able to take more physical damage, and that's what effective health is. 
And these values is what we're looking at here in order to understand the difference between items and how it changed with this patch. And that's exactly what you see here. I took the physical effect of health as well as the physical effect of health after 10 seconds because I feel like 10 seconds is a reasonable amount of time for a fight to last. Usually after that either you're dead or you're out of the fight or something along that lines. Obviously some fights last a lot shorter, some last longer, but 10 seconds I feel is a good average middle ground there. I also highlighted certain numbers in case of physical effective health that is 3500 and above whereas in the case of magical effective health that is 2800 and above. These values don't have a specific reason, I just wanted to have an overview of which basically are above and below this line. This line itself is chosen by me with no specific background to it. There's nothing that happens if you reach 2800 effective magical health or something. I just wanted to see where the top part is compared to the bottom part basically. There is also the price difference between these items, though it is kind of minor for most of them. Both of these items are between 2000 and 2350 gold, so the biggest difference we have for the most part is 350 gold, with the very exception of Stone of Binding, which I include because some people were asking about it, which obviously will have lower stats but also a lower price tag to it, 300 less than the cheapest other item aside of that. Obviously this effect of health and price can be put into relation, but I did not make this for this particular video due to the relatively low price difference between all these items. That is not to say that there is no difference between a 2000 and a 2300 gold item. Obviously it's a lot of wards you could get that way, it's a chalice that you could get, it's maybe half an item that you could get that way, so it's not completely useless, but it should not be the main focus here when we look at the effect of health values. And those values are in fact very interesting. We'll start with the physical effect of health here. If we look at the base value, it's 2100. With Watchers and Reinforce, we had 2440. Almost all items bring this stat above 3000, with the exception of Stone of Binding. But how far above is very different depending on the item. Some items add more around 25% extra physical effect of health, while others add more than 50%. There are four items that make it past 3500 effective health by default. That's Sovereignty, Midgardian Mail, Emperor's Armor and Height of the Amean Lion. Height of the Urchin is pretty close but needs some stacks to get there, though then it quickly catapults to the top. Let's first talk about the items that fall off a little bit here. Breastplate of Valor comes in at 3471, so below the 3500 threshold and is basically already on the bottom tier because of this. That is pretty bad for an item that purely relies on physical protection. I've said over and over that Breastplate of Valor is not a good item on supports to get early on and this kind of fundamentals it. You have some CDR, yes, but you lose so much effective health, you don't get any auras for your team, you get a little bit of mana, but you also have one of the highest price tags in this category. There is not a lot of benefit in building this item, especially since we're only talking about physical effective health so far and we'll still have to get to magical effective health where Breastplate of Valor with zero health on the item and just the physical protection completely falls off. Son of Gaia comes in even weaker. I thought Son of Gaia could be an interesting experiment knowing that we had supports rushing Winged Blade for its passive and I do think that there is some benefit in rushing Son of Gaia on some supports in some situations. Those are a lot more rare than I was hoping they would be though. The effect of health is still relatively low and the only time I could imagine building something that early on is if you're against an Ares and you don't want to get pulled early. Everything else kind of makes it a bit too weak to be picked up, considering how low the effect of health is and how little benefits the item has for your team. Stone of Binding, yeah, it's there. It has almost as much effect of health as Stone of Gaia. Maybe if you combine the two, because they're both kind of cheap, it might go somewhere, but it's just not as effective as other items that are not that drastically more expensive. Sovereignty is only 400 gold more, and the effective health gap is immense. I'm talking about 800 effective health here. The passive is not that good to make up for it. Heart of the Urchin, again, it is too low in this state, and the problem with Heart of the Urchin is that it just doesn't offer anything else. It's a very nice effective health item when it comes to later stacks, it has a very nice magical effective health, but in the physical department for early on it doesn't do enough without any stacks, and you have to get those stacks first, and usually that's not what you're looking to do, especially not if you're getting Urchin, because it means you're already in a situation where you need to stack up defense and are getting pressure to some extent. And with that, let's look more towards the winning ones. And that's Sovereignty by a stretch. Even though Sovereignty was nerfed, it still brings in 3730 effective health. And that while being one of the cheapest items you can buy with 2100 gold. 
Midgardian mail comes pretty close and Emperor's armor is also not too far away, whereas Hide of the Nemean Lion actually is the second one with 3708 health. Problem with Hide of the Nemean Lion, it is kind of the same category as Breath of Valor. It only has physical defense and completely drops off when it comes to magical effective health. So what are we left with? Realistically, you want an aura in early game that benefits you or a passive that benefits you. Emperor's Armor is probably not one of those. It is nice for late game, but as the stats are not superior to the other items by that much, I would not see a reason to build it early on. Height of the Nemean Lion, also very conditional, very situational. You're not gonna eat up that many basic attacks early on, you're not even able to do that anyways. Height of the Urchin, like I said, not too many benefits for the team and is left without stacks. So regarding the team benefits, the items that really are in competition here are Sovereignty and Midgardian Mail. Don't underestimate Midgardian Mail's passive early on. It's very strong in certain trading scenarios, but also don't overestimate it. Sovereignty gives you more for your team like right off the bat. It is just this nice physical protection. Even when it is just 15 now, it's still very good. If we look at Thebes in comparison, it really falls short. There is a huge disparity in effective health. We're talking 550 here. 550 in early game is multiple abilities and basic attacks. And this gets more drastic if you look at the effective health after 10 seconds. Here you can see that Sovereignty actually rises up by another almost 200 health due to the fact that it has HP 5 on the item. So this item becomes even stronger, especially due to the mix of HP 5 and physical protection. Two items reach the threshold of 3500 here, which is Breath of Valor and Heart of the Urchin, but only by a little bit, so it doesn't really matter all too much. On the other hand, Gone of Thebes doesn't really gain much. It has HP 5 on it, but not as much as Sovereignty, and also doesn't have the protections that come along with it to make HP 5 more beneficial. The item itself already relies on a lot of health, and as such, the extra benefit from it is not as strong. The item that really benefits from being in a fight a little bit longer is Sovereignty, while also being the strongest item when it comes to effective health beforehand, and one of the cheapest ones. So that really shows how much potential Sovereignty has in comparison to other items at the moment. But we're not quite done, let's look at the magical effective health. Here we have some other winners. Obviously there's less magical protection in the game early on, so there will be different values and we're talking more about the 2000 spectrum here. The threshold shows us that Stone of Gaia actually gains a decent amount of effectiveness here, but not quite enough to make it a reasonable pickup outside of those special situations. The main amount of damage in early game will come from physical sources. You have structures, you have objectives, you have guards, you have minions, and almost all of them primarily deal physical damage. The magical damage compared to that is really, really low. Your soul laners may not even have mystical mail at that point, your mid laner does not do that much early game, and then the other magical damage you does support. So really what you should be concerned about is physical effective health and you would have to have an item that has drastically more magical effective health in order to make that better. We have Gone of Thieves pretty high up here and even higher we have Hide of the Urchin because it kind of has these evened out defenses. But how often will that really matter? If you're looking to build something against a comp with three magical damage dealers, then yes, I would say Gone of Thieves probably is pretty strong here, or you could look into Hardwood, which could also be competition in that field. But talking about your typical matchup, none of these really have enough to show for. The health difference between Sovereignty and God of Thieves is only 400 here after all, and that's not factoring in that with every second the fight goes on, it, it swings more in favor of Sovereignty due to the HP 5. And all the other items are pretty much not even worth discussing in that context. As such, my conclusion out of this is, unless there's a very specific situation that requires specific items, like for example, magical defense where you look for a Gauntlet of Thebes or Hardwood Amulet, or an outlier case like being matched against an Ares where Stone of Gaia actually has more of a benefit now, the item you mostly want to look for in your traditional three physical comp is Sovereignty. Sovereignty is just drastically stronger than Thebes after these changes when it comes to effective health. It still gives you the physical protection and the aura for your team, which is really, really nice. I do believe that you will still build Thebes later on in the build, as the aura is just very, very potent for your team, but it's probably not the first thing you're looking for, and if you're combining two auras, you still get the double benefit, so it's not like anything goes wasted that way. In early game, you gotta make sure not just to provide for your team, but also be survivable. And for being survivable, sovereignty is probably the best choice in most matches at this point. 
Obviously, that's just my opinion based on these numbers. You can look on these numbers yourself and maybe get a completely different conclusion because you favor another item for the effect or something like that. But that's what I wanted to show you for the next patch. I probably won't be rushing Thebes anymore all too often and will look for Sovereignty instead. With that, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope this was insightful. If you enjoyed this, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell. It really helps me out. See you for the next one tomorrow. Deke Sloth, out.